All of this, again, is completely customizable to what you want to capture when you're creating a new job, not what the system tells you you need to capture when you create a new job. This is customizable for you. That's how you create new data inside Salesforce. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Salesforce for Recruiters. My name is Brad Owens, and I'm your host. I was like you. I spent almost 15 years in recruiting, and along the way, I really wasn't happy with any of the tech that I was using. And then I saw Salesforce for the first time, and I went, where has this been my whole life? So since then, I've dedicated my career to helping you understand more about Salesforce and what it can do for your staffing and recruiting firm or internal recruiting use case. Today, we're going to talk all about data. We're gonna talk about creating data. We're gonna talk about manipulating data. We're gonna talk about reports and dashboards. We're gonna talk about tracking. Everything you wanna know about what goes on with data inside Salesforce, we're gonna to cover today. So to start it off, let's talk about creating some data. Here we are inside our recruiting environment inside Salesforce. We work at Pacifica today. What we're gonna to do today is we're gonna create some new records. We need to create some new contacts. We met some new people that we need to get in our database. We have a new job that we need to input. I'm gonna show you how you can do this in the system and the multiple different ways you have available to you. First off, we're gonna start with the global quick actions of being able to create new records from wherever you are. Let's first dig in up here in the upper right-hand corner. You see, we have this plus button. This is our global actions. And in global actions, what you can do is you can create new items of a particular type. So if you needed a new event, if you had an interview coming up, or a new task for yourself, maybe a new contact. That's what we'll start on today. We're gonna to create a new person in this environment. So let's create a new contact. What you're gonna notice is I haven't had to leave the screen I was on. I'm still in the context of my work. I can still view everything that's right here on my screen, but I have the ability now to create a new contact. And what shows up on this screen, these fields that you wanna collect are completely customizable. You can create these to be whatever you wanna track about a person, or at least the data that you need to get in right off the bat. For today, we're gonna deal with this new person. Um, I don't know, we'll call them Chris uh, Topher. Um, and the account name, maybe they work for a company called, yeah, Omega's fine. Maybe we know their LinkedIn URL or whatever it might be. And then we just have to click save. As soon as we click save, we now have a new contact. And you're gonna see it pop up, hey, you've got this new contact. Now we have the ability to view this new person that we just entered in, and we can see all the information we entered about them, and then give us the ability to enter way more. So now you can see that we've got all the ability to enter his title, maybe their height, if that's something crazy that we wanna track. It's completely up to you what you want on this page. All of these different types of things you can start collecting on this individual. You can upload their resume, you can uh, look at all the related data to them if you have any. All of this is now available to you just from that really quick global action of creating a new contact. And we can do the exact same thing for a job. So if we have a new job we need to enter, we go again to the quick actions. We say we have a new job. Real quick, we can say this is an admin. Uh, the hiring manager is going to be this new person, Chris, that we uh, put in our system. Now it's a, is it a retain role, a perm role, a consulting role? All of these different entry criteria are things that I created that I need specific for my recruiting style. And you can do the exact same thing. If you want to keep track of the location, maybe the account, the start date, whatever it might be, whatever you need your sales team or your recruiters to track, you can do that right off the bat with one of those global quick actions. So let me show you one other way that you might be able to create new data inside of Salesforce. First, we're going to go to our actual list of these things. So let's say we needed to create our new contact again. Now we're here on our list of all of the contacts that we have inside Salesforce. This is every single person that we have in our database, but we need to create a new one. See right here? Got another quick action. So this is a quick action bar. This gives you the ability to create new things right off the bat or take some kind of action to these people that are on this list. Maybe you need to send an email, add them to a job, whatever it might be. It's the exact same types of actions that are in the global actions, but while global actions are available everywhere, these actions, these quick actions are available only in the spot that you put them. So today we're gonna create a new contact from here. And now it opens up a little bit larger of a screen for us to enter a little bit more data. So if we need to get a bit more specific about what we wanna enter, we do that here. You can see we still have the ability to have first name, last name, account. This page again is completely customizable to what you want. So that's how we create a new contact. We can do the exact same thing for jobs. If we were on our jobs page and we saw all of the new jobs that are open in our system here today, 
we have the ability right here to create a new job. So when we click on new job, we're taken to this screen where we can enter in all sorts of different data about this particular job. We have a little bit more data than we had on the other screen. We have the ability to now enter the name, the account, the opportunity that it came from. Maybe our sales team was working on this. A hiring manager, who's the sales lead, who's the delivery lead. You can see we have a little bit more information here. So this is just giving us a better place to start from. All of this, again, is completely customizable to what you want to capture when you're creating a new job, not what the system tells you you need to capture when you create a new job. This is customizable for you. That's how you create new data inside Salesforce. Now, there are other ways you could be creating data. That's more of the manual effort of going through and creating something new. There's also the ability to import new things into Salesforce. If you had a gigantic list of people that you met at some kind of industry event or campus hiring event or whatever it might be, you can create an Excel spreadsheet, essentially, and import all of those new records into Salesforce with a single click. You have that ability. You also have the ability to auto create all of this different data that you may want to report on. Let me show you how we do that. If we went to a very specific job, like let's say we're dealing with this project manager job here. You can see when this position opens that we now have a number of different things on this job already. We have a number of different people that have already applied. We have our Kanban view that shows all the people that are in this process. You can see we've been moving people through. But what I want to show you today is the data that's automatically created just by using our system. When we take someone like Deckard here and we move them over to a client submittal, we're making a change to this person's record. We're saying this person has been sent out to this hiring manager. So I'm gonna skip it for now. But where does all that data go? Well, you can see it right here in this related tab. And this will show you all the related data that's happened with this particular job. You can see here's all the different applicants. Here's all the different interviews that have happened. Here's all the different offers that we've created in this role. Here's all the placements that have happened. And here's every single bit of history on this particular job. So not only can you mainly create data or bulk upload data, you can also get data automatically created for you like you see here. And all of this data gives you the ability to be able to run a report. So one of the things I like to know when I'm a hiring manager is what is my team up to? What sort of data are they creating? How are they actually using my system? Because of the way that recruiting can be set up inside Salesforce, you can have the ability to see every single thing that happens with a particular individual, a particular job, and track that as well. You can see down here that in our initial report here, we've got the submissions interview, send out to hire. We've got how many applicants we have by a job. If I were a different type of individual, and let's say I was on the recruiting team and I maybe am a recruiting leader and I want to see how my recruiters are engaging with my candidates and my active talent, you can see that here. Now we've got a list of activities by recruiter and you can see how my recruiters are stacking up with how many activities they have this week. Now, how are we generating that data? It's not something that they have to go in and put in after the fact. It's just purely by them using the system. And I'll show you how we do that. So we have a hiring manager right here for this project manager opportunity called Mariana. And Mariana is someone that we've been doing business with for quite some time. So if we pull up her record here. We can see that we have a number of different details on her. We have where she lives. We have her LinkedIn profile over here. But we also have this thing called an activity feed. And this activity feed is showing me everything that's been happening with this particular individual. Had a follow-up email, a cold call, a couple calls that went through, another follow-up. Looks like we have a task that's upcoming with this particular individual. So you can see everything that's happened with this individual. The same will occur on a job. If you want to see everything that's happened on a particular job, you have all of that related data there. If you want to see everything that's happened with a particular account, we can go all the way up to Omega here and look at the account that she reports into, Omega, and all the different details that we have on that particular account. But also you can see over here in the activity view, everything we've done with Mariana and the rest of her team and everyone that exists at Omega, we can see all of that activity. So if we're about to call into an account as a recruiter, we want to see what's been happening at that account. We have a very quick overview of all of that activity right here. And all that data is auto created for us inside of Salesforce because we're simply just using the system to do our job. That's the power of automatic data inside Salesforce. So now there's two ways that we can actually take advantage of all this data that's in our system inside Salesforce. The first is with reporting and the second is with the larger dashboard view. I'm going to show you both of those. First, when it comes to reporting, I want to show you how simple it is to actually build a report. So we're going to do one from scratch. So first, I'm going to go pull up my reports and I'm going to create a new one. So this screen that we see here is just all of the different reports that I have inside my system. If I wanted to create a new one, it's as simple as clicking new report. 
Now you need to tell it what type of report do you want to report out on. So today we're going to be re reporting on all of our different applicants and where they're at in the hiring stage. I want to see as a leader, how many people do we have interviewing? What stage are they in? Is there any particular reason that they might be caught in a particular stage? And you can see that there's not a whole lot for me to work with right now. So I need to create new filters. So let's say I, as a leader, want to see all the jobs, not just mine. I want to see all the jobs that are out there. I want to see all the jobs that were created, I don't know, just because it's a demo here, let's say all time, every single job, every single job we've got. Now, if I refresh this, you'll see that we've got a number of different people, but this isn't really showing us things that we need. You can see that we know the job that this person has applied to. We know the stage that they're in, but application number doesn't do a whole lot for us. We don't know the individual. We need to start seeing those things. So let's change that. We can simply take out the application number by clicking here. And if I hit refresh, you can see that it's no longer on this report. But what we do need is we need to know the actual applicant name, right? So let's go with job applicant full name. We can add that to our report and refresh. So now we can at least see who the person is, what stage they're in, and what job they applied for. But we want to see across all of our jobs. So we need to actually group these. So what we want to group them by is we want to see on a particular stage across all of our jobs how many people are in those actual stages. So now you can see that we've got 12 different applicants in application, two different applicants that have been sent to a client, two that are under internal review, and you can start seeing more and more how many total applicants we have and where they're stuck at stages. So right now you won't be able to actually see this because it's not reporting out on all the data. So now we have the ability by clicking run to see all the different data. And if I wanted to have this in maybe a chart, I can add a chart here. And it's as easy as choosing which kind of chart type that I want. So here, let's say we want a funnel type. And now we can see if we move our legend to the bottom, we can see how many people we have in an application, client submittal, internal review, interview, and who we've placed. And this is all over time. So it's that easy to create these reports based on the things that we find relevant. If we even need to show a value on these, we can. So that's how easy it is to create a report inside Salesforce off of the data that's already in there. Now, I wanna save this report so we can use this somewhere else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back, I'm going to edit the name of this report, I'm gonna call this my applicant stages, I guess. Now that it's applicant stages, I'm gonna save it and run it, and we'll just save it. So now the applicant stages report was built. Now, if I go back to my home page, you can see that once I refresh my actual dashboard here, that I have a number of different data fields here on my dashboard. And what I can do is I can make this a little bigger by clicking open here, and now you can see my entire recruiting dashboard. These are the things that I care about. But I wanna also bring in that report that we just built. So I'm gonna edit to have a dashboard set up the way that I want it. And now that I'm editing this dashboard, what I can do is I can take these different reports. I can just move them around anywhere I want. So I want that one to go down here or over here or up here where it was, or I want to swap these two out. I can move this one over here, move this one up here. So now I have an entire swap dashboard that's set up the way that I want it. Now, maybe I want to add that new report that we just built. So I would go up here I'd click add widget. I want to add a chart that we just built. You can see I've got my new report that's right here, this applicant stages. So I'll click on that and I can tweak what I want shown. You can see that it shows a bar chart. I don't want that. I want to have a funnel. So now I've got my funnel report. Do you want to show the record count or not? Do you want to show the values that are in there? Do you want to combine them? Do you want to sort it in a different way? You have the ability to kind of show what sort of data that you want in here. I'm just going to click add right now and you'll be able to see that it's down here in the bottom, but it doesn't really show up well in this dashboard. So I need to tweak this dashboard a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy here and I'm gonna make him a little bit smaller down to here. You can see it auto adjusts and move this guy up to here. And I still have this gap over here. So why don't I move this one there and I can take this guy and move him out to there. And now with a save, ta-da, I've just created myself a new dashboard. It's that easy. So now when I log in for the next day, I have the ability to see the exact kind of data that I want from my dashboard. So that's just one of the reasons that I got so excited about Salesforce for staffing and recruiting. It's so easy to create data, 
to track that data and see what's actually happening in your system, to be able to build reports, to be able to build dashboards. Data inside Salesforce is incredibly easy to manipulate. If you're currently having a problem in your ATS of creating data easily, reporting out on it, you should really look at Salesforce. All of these features that I showed you today are made possible by the Assemble Applicant Tracking System. It's asymbl.com if you want to view a little bit more. The Assemble Applicant Tracking System sits inside Salesforce. And because we're able to recruit inside Salesforce, we get to take advantage of all these different features around data. So if you like that kind of content, you're in the right place. There's plenty more at salesforceforrecruiters.com. I will take all the lessons that I learned about Salesforce in my 15 years of recruiting, and I will share them with you so that you don't make the same mistakes I do. So to find out more about recruiting inside Salesforce, you can visit assemble.com. It's A-S-Y-M-B-L.com. And if you like these episodes and want more, it's salesforceforrecruiters.com. Again, I'm your host, Brad Owens. I will see you on the next one. Bye.